Stephen. Uh, my name is Matt Just. I'm the senior technical, a senior technical marketing manager with the VMware's uh, cloud management business unit. And uh, today, um, I'm and I folks strictly focus on V Realize Network Insight and V Realize Network Insight Cloud. So uh, today, what I want to do in this demo, um, this is actually going to be all live demo that I'm going to show here, is show uh, some of our integration with uh, VMware SD WAN by Vela Cloud, uh, Cisco ACI. And depending on time, uh, maybe get into some uh, integration around what we have with Kubernetes within VRealize Network Insight. So I have the demo environment up, so you can actually see the dashboard within the product. And you can see the various uh, entities and so on that you can select within the product to, to focus on, depending on you know, what your, your persona is or, or what your job role may be, whether it's a virtual admin, network admin, security admin. Now, um, focusing specifically on the Velo Cloud integration to start off with. So you can see here we have an option to launch into the Velo Cloud Enterprise. What this is going to do is this is going to open up, and this is actually going to show us our full uh, Velo Cloud SD WAN deployment that we have deployed uh, in our organization. Now, what you're seeing here is you're seeing an overview uh, from an enterprise view. So this is showing me my entire deployment in, in, uh, in a single dashboard. So I can see what events I have occurring within uh, my SD-WAN uh, deployment. I can see how many edges I have in my deployment, how many hubs I've got configured in my deployment, how many gateways, Velo call gateways or, or VCGs that we're connected to, how many ISP links that we have connected to our edges, the number of edge-to-edge -edge flows, the number of internet flows, and then we also can see how all the applications that are traversing our Velo Cloud edges um, from our various locations throughout the world. We have a full list here, so you can actually see all of the applications. So as I scroll down, you're gonna see all the different applications that are currently traversing the edges. You're gonna see the category that that, app, that that application falls under, and you're also gonna see the number, the total number of edges that that actual um, application is has active flows traversing that edge. Now, if we detect a problem with an application. Question. Yep. Uh, how do you associate names with those applications? Obviously, some of them on the internet, we're just going to map that to a DNS name. For internal applications, how do I populate that uh, identity notion of an application with the name? So the way that we're getting this is, is so when we, we, inter we uh, as far as integration with VeloCloud goes, we integrate one with the VeloCloud orchestrator. And we also collect NetFlow from all of the edges deployed in the, infra in the Velo Cloud infrastructure. The NetFlow that we receive from the edges actually has the application ID embedded in the NetFlow, which allows us to see the actual applications that are uh, traversing through those edges. Now, as far as on the Velo Cloud side, um, we have a pre-built database in the, in the orchestrator that will recognize applications. But you can also go in and you can, if you have like custom applications that you're running, you can go in and you can add those to the database, specify things like the name of the application, what port it's utilizing, or port range, IPs, and so on. And then as the uh, NetFlow, as we receive it within Network Insight, we're actually going to show that here as that application. Um, a perfect example was the application that we were looking at earlier, the Hive Media application is a custom application that we're running. Um, so if I came in here and type in Hive, you're going to see the Hive Media application that we're seeing, and we're learning about this application via the NetFlow that we're receiving from the Velo Cloud Edge. So this is actually it's it's mapping to an application ID. We recognize that and then show it by by the actual application name. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let me go ahead and I'll back up out of it. So you can see we're monitoring again. You can see various applications. We also interface with Google Maps uh, to show uh, a display of the actual deployment. So I can start to scroll in and I can see where I have my uh, Velo Cloud edges. I can see where I have uh, my Velo Cloud hubs set up. Um, I can see where my Velo Cloud gateways are. And again, you know, this is a, a deployment that we have that's um, set up across the world. So we've got in the United Kingdom, uh, our Rotterdam branch. So I can see where all those edges are actually placed and where they live. I can also come in and I can search by an edge name if I wanted to focus in. So if I had a very large deployment, let's say of like 6,000 Velo Cloud edges, I can simply come in and search for the edge that I want to focus on. I can also filter down on the type. I can just look at edges or hubs. 
I can do it by category. So um, based on the application category, we can filter down and look at edges that are utilizing or act, uh, have uh, active flows for those specific categories. We can also filter down by application and only see the edges that are utilizing a specific application. And we can also see like things like the profiles that are assigned to the edges and filter down on those and also the segments that are defined with on uh, the edges. Now we're also monitoring all events that are occurring obviously within the infrastructure. So in regards to events, we looked at some of the, 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 the Velo Cloud uh, Edge QoE degre uh, degraded. We can see here that um, we had some uh, packet loss. Uh, so in this case, this was an application packet loss. Uh, it's been archived, that's why it's great. But we can actually see here that this was the Hive Media application and the Detroit branch was accessing that application. And we saw a packet loss of value of 3.2%, which, which uh, exceeds the threshold of, of 3% for that application. So we generated an alert and we were also indicating which ISP link that application was ut utilizing on that Velo Cloud Edge um, that we could actually dive in and look at that ISP link to see how it's performing from uh, you know, latency perspective or jitter, jitter uh, packet drop. Um, so we're analyzing uh, all of that across all of the ISP links that are connected to each Velo Cloud Edge. Further down, we're monitoring also and providing a full view of traffic distribution. So this is actually uh, showing us all traffic distribution by application. So I can see the applications, I can see the SD-WAN priority, the number of flows that um, are going on with that application, and also a sum of the total flow traffic. We're also showing the traffic distribution by edges. So I can see all of my edges and I can see how many flows I have occurring on each edge and then a uh, also the total flow traffic. We're also showing you uh, the source and destination SD-WAN edge communication. So I can see from it, for instance, the Rotterdam branch to the Washington data center has 172 flows at 4.3 gigs. We're also uh, showing the traffic distribution by flow path. So I can see uh, edge to edge via hub, edge to cloud direct, edge to cloud via gateway and edge to edge direct and the associated flows and the size of the traffic flow for those flows. We're showing you the traffic distribution by traffic type. So we can see transactional, real time and bulk and, and the associated flows and, and uh, summarization of the flow traffic, the link policy by distribution. So round robin, load balancer on set, and then also traffic distribution by the route type. We're also monitoring availability of all edges and, and um, hubs deployed within the infrastructure. So here I can see all of the available edges and, and their uptime. I can simply come in and I can uh, expand upon an edge and get information. So I can see the uptime on the edge. I can see it is connected. I can see the profile that the edge is provisioned under, what model number edge this is, what device family, the software version that's running on the edge. It's activated, it's not functioning as a hub. I can see which gateways this edge is actually utilizing and then what's its super gateway. I can see the virtual uh, or the VCO, the Bill Cloud Orchestrator that is managing this edge. I can see the internet links that are connected to this edge. So in this case, it's got just a single internet link connected to it. And we can also see there was a second internet link connected to it. And this is just an event that we have an archive for demo purposes. But you can see that this uh, available call link labeled entity was unstable and it actually um, was disconnected from the edge. So that's why we received the alert. If an edge goes unavailable or goes uh, out of an activated state, it would actually show up here in the unavailable edge slash uh, hub section. We're also pulling uh, real-time metrics from the devices. So we're actually able to monitor and we kind of break this up in a couple different ways. One, we're looking at the edge traffic we're, uh, at the, or the edge itself. We're also looking at the application. And then we also look at the links or the ISP links that are connected to that actual edge. So this is going out and pulling the metrics. So here I can see a list of my edges and I can see, uh, for instance, like the Detroit branch. So I can see my total flow traffic, what my network traffic rate is and what my flow packet count is uh, for this specific edge. So I can go across this, you can see this is over a 24 hour period. If I wanted to expand this window and look at you know, the traffic distribution on the edge, um, that it, you know, from a uh, from an edge perspective, I can come in and I can select a, a specific date time range that I want to focus on. 
as I scroll down, I can see the various edges. I can see the, how much traffic, you know, some of these have very little traffic, others have uh, increased traffic. When we look at the packet level, we're looking also at, uh, from an edge perspective, we're looking at the flow packet count, how many, uh, any type of packet drops that we're detecting or any retransmitted packets. So as I, as I scroll over here, I can see I had some very minimal packet drop on the Detroit branch um, at that specific time. Scrolling further down again, you can see retransmitted packets and so on. So we're gonna provide all of that. And if those exceed our, our the thresholds in the product and then the customer also can define the threshold based on the value that they want, it is going to alert the, the, uh, the end user that their uh, a threshold has been exceeded, whether it's on the retransmitted packet or packet drop. From an edge QoE perspective, we're monitoring the edge quality of experience. So um, a 10 being the best, uh, as you can see here, anytime, you know, as the edge is doing uh, dynamic multipath optimization and doing like forward error correction and so on, um, it, you know, the quality of experience could get affected uh, depending on, you know, how the ISP links are and how the edge is performing. So we can see as uh, the, from a quality of experience perspective, we can see how it's been changing for each one of the edges. From an application traffic perspective, this is actually, we break it down by application and the associated uh, edge itself. So this is showing again, the Rotterdam branch connected to the Hive Media application. We can see the flow packet count, the total flow traffic and the network traffic rate for this specific application where an end user or, or the, this actual edge is, is uh, uh, streaming or accessing this application. So as I scroll down, you'll see various applications you know, uh, from the Detroit branch. And whenever we saw active communication, we're actually gonna show that so you can see Firefox update. I mean, everything's going to be listed and, and give you a view uh, associated to the uh, edge that that application is traversing. And you can view the application performance from a traffic perspective. From the application packet, we're also looking at, for instance, uh, from the, it, it, here's an example of the Detroit branch accessing Zoom. So we can see our flow packet count. And then if we were to see any uh, drop packets or for that application or retransmitted packets, we would actually be displaying that uh, here inside the app application packet performance. Now the links are strictly the ISP links that are connected to each one of the edges. So as I look through these, I can see things like the downstream packet loss, the upstream packet loss, and then the total packets that are traversing the edge. So if you know, as I go through and scroll through these, I can see this virgin media link had some upstream packet loss at one time. Um, but we're monitoring that. And if they exceed, again, a specific threshold, we're going to alert upon that. We're also monitoring uh, latency on the ISP links. So we can see the upstream latency, the upstream jitter, the downstream jitter, and the downstream latency. So we can actually monitor and see how our links are performing. Again, if we start to see, you know, excessive jitter or latency, this could be something that we could export into our report and provide to our, 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 our internet service provider you know, and, and have them look into uh, specific issues based on whether it's excessive jitter or latency that we're actually detecting on that ISP link. We're also monitoring the amount of traffic that's traversing each link. So I can see, uh, again, you know, we can see an uptick on traffic on this uh, spectrum internet link that's connected to our Detroit branch. And we're monitoring the link quality of experience. So for each link that's connected to the actual uh, edge, we're monitoring how that link is performing from a quality experience perspective when we're looking at how voice, transactional, and video traffic would be traversing that edge. So next, um, so this is an overview of, of our integration with VeloCloud. This is a, a recent uh, integration that we added in uh, View Realize Network Insight 5.0. Um, so what I want to do next is jump over really quick and give you guys a view of what our ACI integration looks like. So with Cisco ACI, as I mentioned, we actually pulled data through the APIC, um, which is the uh, managing the, uh, the the management plane for uh, the ACI fabric. Now, this is actually an instance where we're actually running NSX uh, over ACI. So we actually have NSX deployed in the overlay and then uh, in the virtual infrastructure and then ACI running in the underlay. So things that we're gonna pull from the ACI information and display are gonna be things like the endpoint group. So we can see the EPGs defined in the application profile. So I can actually come in and I can click on an EPG. 
And this is gonna show me the information as far as what the bridge domain, the VRF, what is the encapsulated VLAN, the app, uh, application profile, uh, the bridge domain reference, the number of VMs that are actually in this endpoint group. I can look at and see what actual VMs are actually in that EPG. And I can click on any of these and launch into those VMs and look at specific data around that. I can also see all of the MAC addresses from an endpoint perspective. And then the APIC that is managing uh, or that this endpoint group is defined on. Further down, we can see the VMs in the application profile. So I can look at the various VMs that are in that application profile. We're also looking at the APICs, the fabric controller. So I can see my cluster of APICs. I got three, you know, my three, three node cluster, and I can look at specific information around the actual APIC. Um, and what we're seeing here, uh, as far as IP address, its state uh, from a, a, an admin state, the node ID, the serial number, you're getting all that information. We're also showing the fabric tenants, so all the tenants that are configured within um, the uh, within the APIC and the ACI environment. We're learning about the switch fabric. So these are gonna be all my Nexus 9K switches in my ACI fabric. And so you can see here, we, see, we show the name of the actual switch. You're gonna see what that switch, what role it's performing. So typically it's a you know, leaf spine type deployment. So we can see if the switch is acting as a leaf or if it's actually functioning as a spine. I can come in, for instance, to the spine, expand upon this, and what it's going to show me is all the information. It's going to show me what model Nexus 9K, what its IP address, its out-of-band IP, serial number, number of ports, and then I can look at the switch port table configuration and see what ports are up, what are down, what VLANs are allowed, MTU, interface speed, and duplex. Now, we also map, similar to how I showed the hybrid, the hybrid application, We'll map out the, because we're pulling and learning about all the information from Cisco ACI, here's an example of um, a VM to VM communication running in a non-premises deployment uh, with Cisco ACI and NSX. So we can see our, our source VM, our destination VM. We can see again our distributed firewall, which I can click on, see the firewall rules that are in path between the source and the destination. We can look at things like the distributed logical router, or if this was NSXT, the tier, the tier one router information. Uh, again, we can see the OSPF, it's running OSPF between the DLR and the uh, ESG. We can see the routing table and the routing interfaces and all of their, you know, the next hops, the protocols that are running. Uh, um, again, uh, any type of the different logical interfaces that are configured on that DLR, their IP address, their network, their status. And then we can see as we uh, the VX lands, we can see as it goes over to our edge services gateway, and then from our edge services gateway down through our physical NIC, and then we can see it hits the so uh, it hits the uh, top rack switch or the leaf switch. Now we actually um, show these we're actually VRF aware, so that's why when you look at this from a leaf spine perspective, you're kind of like you know why are there two leaves? Um, so what, if I highlight over this, what you're going to see is you'll notice here that it's showing. This is the uh, node 103, and it's the NSX VRF. And this is actually going to be the same switch, node 103, but this is the overlay VRF. And we can actually launch into one, each one of these and look at specific information around the VRF that's configured on the Nexus 9K in this ACI fabric that's in this path, including the routing table and the routing interfaces as it goes and hits our spine. And then uh, arrives at our destination host and arrives at our, uh, our destination VM. We can also show equal cost multipathing. So if I enable the switch, it's going to show me all possible ECMP paths. As I highlight over, I can see possible paths that it can take in that path. Okay, and just to wrap this up, so, and again, we're going to show things like the endpoint property. So in this case, these are the two VMs that we just looked at the path, and then how many path ports are in path between the source and the destination these path ports are gonna be both virtual and physical ports in path.